So from the very beginning of, of the service, uh, you've been pulled into a higher octave, a higher vibrational frequency. You've moved into a state of not only of receptivity, but you, many of you have moved into this state of being. We're not only receptive to more good than you can possibly imagine, but you are becoming more and more aware that that good is emanating from the depth of your being. You're not needing an intermediary to give it to you. You're going direct to the spirit, which is the calling of New Thought Ageless Wisdom. It is to go direct to the source of all creation and be aware that your life as a unique, distinct emanation of the only life that there is carries every single quality, every, all the full essence of the spirit is already within you. You're catching that now. And though you may have been hypnotized uh, in the past, though you've been mesmerized by separation, though you may have been walking asleep, dreaming that you are awake, though you may have been seduced or provoked or intimidated by external circumstances into believing that you were less than who and what you really are, this is your vibrational wake-up call. We're saying to you from the very epicenter of divine love, which is what agape means, the unconditional love of God, the love of God operating within the human heart as described by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. From the epicenter of divine love, we're reminding you that you are here to become more you. You're not here to become a follower. You're here to step into spiritual leadership by coming to an understanding that your life is significant, your life matters, your life is a one-of-a-kind expression of pure spirit and that you are here on this planet as a yes factor from you. You chose to be here. You chose to incarnate at interesting times. You chose to be here during a time in which the phenomenal realm is a somewhat chaotic. You chose to be here during a time in which structures are falling apart part to every single place on the planet in order for the emergence of a whole pa new paradigm to come on the planet. You chose to be here and you chose to be a placeholder, vibrational placeholder for the vibration of the eternal to come to earth. How do I know that? Because you tuned into Agape and that's what we're all about. And in view of staying here for any length of time, you are rolling up in antiquity, the old religiosity points of view that would have you scrambling to be good, to get to a place called heaven. No, you have become aware that Jesus told you that the kingdom of heaven is at hand now. That it's a state of ever-expanding awareness and that, and that the bliss ethic and the bliss vibration comes from the activity of your potential being activated. So you have come into that dynamic and now you are ready to stabilize your next stage of unfoldment so that you, as being more you, we're not asking you to be anything else. We're not asking you to walk around and hold Bibles and, and do quotes of Bible scriptures. You can do that. It's a beautiful thing. We love the Bible. We love Bible scriptures. But we want your life to be the scripture. We want your life to be the scripture that people can see. We want your life to be the Bible that people can read. We want your life, that smile on your face, that generosity, that willingness to forgive, that, that dynamic awareness of a, of a self-worth and a dynamic self-appreciation to be the holy writ that people can see and feel from miles away. We want you to be more you. Thus, when you, when you hear the vibration of the theme of the month is you want change, a question mark, then you must change your vibrational address. You've come to an understanding that we are vibrational beings. We're more than flesh and blood. We are vibrational beings. And we have come to an understanding, and I'll remind you of a few of these things. We have come to an understanding, of course, that the very DNA strand that used to be the precursor to someone's destiny Someone that used to say back in the old days of medicine that your DNA, which carries the X amount of chromosomes, would basically determine your destiny and that it was kind of a fatalistic point of view. Metaphysicians and mystics have been saying for years that that's not so. Now the field of epigenetics has come onto the scene. Evolutionary biology has come onto the scene telling you scientifically that the moment you lift your vibration and frequency, the moment you have an affirmative thought, 
emanating from a, your center, your DNA strand expands. And when you have a low level frequency, it contracts. In other words, you get to program your own stuff. You get to program your own DNA. Not, and we're not even talking about the fact that the universal mind under, that, that, that created law, universal law, matches your vibration and frequency at any given moment so that your life is an outpicturing of your predominant vibration. So we don't want you to look at this and feel blame and fault finding in yourself. We know that it is a, a difficult thing to live in a world of shifting phenomena with the vicissitudes of the, of, the, of the planet going up and down, up and down. We already know that individuals are bombarded, bombarded from day and night with all kinds of negative news and fear and doubt and worry that absolutely vibrates at the level of some of your original DNA strands that were necessary to be fear-driven in order for you to survive but not any longer. Now we are transcending what we have inherited from the ancestral code throughout, throughout, the, throughout the hundreds of years where we needed that in order to survive. You will survive at a higher frequency. We're transcending that and coming to an understanding that there is something about us that when activated, there's something about us when realized Something about us, when embraced, will not only carry the vibrational frequency of the next great movement of our own soul expressing on the planet, it also will carry the intuitive awareness of what you need to stay away from and how to protect yourself and to be safe without being in fear 24-7, thus to sending your body full of toxicity, killing yourself off way earlier than you're supposed to be based on worry and doubt and fear and avarice and greed. No, not you. Not here, not now. You have come to change your vibrational address, a totally new zip code, so that all that you have uh, uh, put out before from a lower frequency when it tries to come back and find you, you're not there. You've moved. You're not even the same being anymore. And that particular energy gets dissolved into the no-thingness from which it has come never to exist again or, or fall prey on someone who is still vibrating at that particular level. Are you ready to change your vibrational address? I know you are because you're still listening. Some people just tuned on and say, what is this guy talking about? What? Stay tuned. I think you're ready to change your vibrational address and come to an understanding. I, I was saying in the early service, I remembered that old, that old joke that was told years ago about the gentleman going to the, the, the hot dog stand and he says to the man, make me one with everything. And the man hands him his dog and says, you already are one with everything. And he says, well, where's my change? He said, well, change comes from within. And so we are keenly aware that intrinsically we're one with the whole enchilada or hot dog or pizza or tofu. We're one with everything. And dynamic change comes from within us. So we're reminding ourselves, one, divine health is called spiritual mindedness. Healing is called freedom from distractions. That when, in fact, you're spiritually minded, that means your attention is on the essence of the spirit. Love, peace, joy, wisdom, harmony, compassion, kindness, generosity, creativity. These are all uh, 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 the essence of the presence of God. And I was saying in the earlier service, there was a, a time in, at Agape a number of years ago where one of our choir members, uh, uh, his mother had made her transition. And she was at uh, supposed to be an avowed atheist. And so when it came time to do the memorial service, the family met in my office and one brother was saying, we don't really want to do this. Mom would never participate in a spiritual service. She was an atheist. And the other gentleman was saying, no, that's not true. Mom came to see me sing in the choir on a regular basis. And, and even when I wasn't singing, she would show up. And they were kind of bickering in my office. And I said, hold on a second. Let's agree upon one thing. 
Your mom was interested in love and peace. She was an activist about peace. She was a lover. And those qualities are of God. We would say that those qualities are the essence of God. So though she may not have used God, she believed in affirmative qualities. Can we not just agree upon that and throw away the labels for a moment? Love, peace, joy, wisdom, beauty, intelligence, abundance. These are all, every, these are all things that we're interested in. And, and they had a happy medium. And I promised them I'd go through the whole service and not mention the word God at all, which I did. Because here in our teaching, we know that when we say the word God, we're not speaking about a man in the sky with an unshaven shaven beard we're speaking about a presence that is never an absence that carries the dynamic of these soulful qualities of which they are imprinted within your very life and being of which you are to discover and activate and ultimately express before you leave the planet you see so their spiritual mindedness which is being interested in the essence and then there is healing which is the elimination of distractions what do i mean by that you have uh, come to an understanding, and I'm speaking this way because I believe in you, and I believe that so many of you have spiritual practice. I feel that so many of you have studied, so many of you are embracing for your next great spiritual impulsion as to who and what you are and what you can possibly be. So somewhere within your being, you have seen the great possibilities of your life. You have seen potential. You have had dreams and visions about what your life can be. And I'm not talking about gross materialism right now. I'm not talking about having all the stuff of the world. I'm, not, I'm talking about you being you and delivering your giftedness on the planet, you see? And so somewhere along the line, you have felt this. And you have felt congruent with the fundamental harmony of the universe. You have felt in alignment with it. And that may have been an aha moment, may have been an insight, may have been a satori moment, may have been, oh, I get it now, you see. Now, that precise moment means that you were being spiritually minded. You weren't being religious necessarily. Remember, as I teach, we're not on a religious quest. We're on a quest for freedom and liberation from limited points of view and superstitious thinking. So at that particular moment, you were free in the spirit. You were spiritually minded. You were healthy. You were healthy. And then healing happens when you free yourself from distractions. You're able to maintain and stabilize that awareness. And so you become absolutely free from distractions. Now, we're going to do an exercise about that in a particular moment. But I just want to remind you before we do that, then we talk about change. We're talking about the fact that as the topic would indicate... We're talking about you not fighting the mirror anymore. Stop struggling with the mirror and, and clean it from the inside. That the world is your mirror that's reflecting back to you, your beliefs, your points of view, your opinions, uh, your perceptions, your positionalities, the dark and the light shining out and reflecting back to you. And so many people are still trying to change the mirror. They're still trying to struggle. They're fighting the mirror. They're resisting the mirror, not changing their perception from within themselves. We were coming to an understanding, of course, uh, metaphysically, uh, that uh, uh, what, you, what you're looking for in the world, what you're looking for, you're absolutely looking with and projecting from the depth of your being. You see? And so what we want to begin to do on a regular basis is have these high insights and the deep feeling tone of connectedness stabilize that around the feeling tone of that and then watch the magic work. Watch the presence of law work. Watch uh, the manifestation work from the dynamic feeling tone of your new address. You're living somewhere else. No longer in a spiritual ghetto of superstition and manipulation and pee, a pleasing and appeasing a reluctant deity. But standing in law as a law-abiding citizen of the cosmos, being on the right side of the law, letting the feeling tone of goodness flow through you so that your address changes significantly. You come out of the ghetto of superstition into the bright, shining environment of all things are possible with God. This is your life on God, you see? This is your life. So in that, in that dynamic, you open yourself up 
So in this particular moment, I want you to begin to think about different structures of your life. Think about more than one. Think about, your, think about the health of your body temple, your mental body, your emotional body. Consider your, 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 your dynamic prosperity. Consider the feeling of being loved and cared for and supported by the presence of God through a God with skin, the people around you. Consider a dynamic peace of mind. What would it feel like if you had peace of mind? And CNN, was it always running in your mind? CNN actually stands for constant negative news. What if, in fact, you had dynamic peace of mind, you see? And this is, this is important because it's hard to find these days. You know, a lot of the research is saying that the, the next great industry is going to be a mental and emotional and spiritual therapy. People trying to find a deep sense of peace about themselves because the world of phenomena is changing so abruptly and so quickly that people cannot find a place of peace in the rapid movement of the world of phenomena. People haven't stepped back far enough to see uh, that every structure is under siege by a new frequency on the planet. Nothing is going to stay the same. There's not going to be any normalization of what used to be. Everything is changing, some nefariously, but primarily there's a fundamental order that governs the cosmos that is moving swiftly upon us, you see? So we are a part of the participant, being a part of the participants of a golden age and the beloved community being born. How However, the shift and change is making people uncomfortable. So you want to begin to imagine what would it feel like you walking uh, through the chaotic period of time right now. Chaos and order. Chaos precedes order. Chaos precedes emergence all the time. Caterpillar to butterfly. Seed dying to become a tree. Chaos precedes order all the time. We're in that dynamic. And so perhaps you want to consider, what does it feel like to have peace of mind? You remember what it felt like? Come, pull it forward. So what I want you to do in this moment, just, just, just close your eyes for a second. And maybe it's going to be longer than a second. I'm lying. It's going to be a moment or two. And just let your imagination go wild about the structures of your life. Don't put any inhibition on it at all. Just begin to look at your life and what does it feel like to be totally healthy? Strong, vibrant, beautiful. I'm not talking about a Western concept of beauty. I'm talking about that beauty that radiates from within out. I got, my, my daughter's here. I can remember you tell her as a kid, you know, you, you want to be beautiful, but you want to be beautiful inside. And let that shine to the outside. That was kind of our thing growing up. She was growing up. You want to feel that radiant beauty and that love. You want to feel the endurance, the power, the flexibility, the strength. You want to begin to notice that all of your needs are met on every level of your life. What does that look like? Just let, it, let your mind go crazy. You want to begin to, to notice, oh, the feeling tone of being absolutely loved and taken care of, loved and cradled by the presence, just never neglected, never dejected, always protected and maintained. What does that feel like, you see? You want to begin to step into peace. You want to begin to step in prosperity. You want to begin to step in health. You want to begin to step in love. Let your mind go crazy for a few seconds right now. Don't put any inhibitors on it at all. Don't say, oh, that's impossible. That could never happen. That's never been, that's, that's never happened in my family. My, in my family, my gene pool is limited. I'll never be able to be totally happy or prosperous or healthy. No, no, let all of that go right now. You are free to let your imagination run wild, unbridled, free, no longer domesticated by time and status quoism. Come on, free yourself. And let it go. Just let it go. 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 Now you're bumping in, you're starting to bump into a feeling now. What does it feel like to be healthy and impervious to disease? What does it feel like to be loved and appreciated and to love and to appreciate? What does it feel like to have a dynamic peace of mind? What does it feel like to have all needs met? What does it feel like? What does it feel like? Now, now, now. Let go of all pictures. Let go of every picture and just stay with the feeling. This is a vibrational universe. The law is going to match the feeling. The pictures can be limiting or the pictures can be out of date by the time something manifests. The pictures can be something you read about in the magazine or somebody influenced you or somebody's past 
uh, that's already happened. No, let go of the pictures. And now just stand with the feeling. Just, just stay with the feeling. Now, breathe in and magnify the feeling. All needs met. <sighs> breathe in and magnify the feeling. I am total, I am total health. Breathe in and magnify the feeling. I am loved and appreciated and supported. Breathe in and magnify the feeling. Oh, my peace of mind cannot be shaken by external circumstances. The feeling, the feeling, the feeling. Now, that is health. That is spiritual mindedness, okay? Healing is when you are eliminating the distractions of that. That when something comes in from the surface mind, reptilian brain, something comes in, worry about and fear, something comes in, you're healing yourself when you're able to dissolve those distractions. Oh, that's a distraction. Oh, that's not in tune with universal law. That's not in tune with universal love. That's a temporary thought form. That's an experience in the world that was the condensation of previously held points of view and opinions. No, that's, that's a distraction. I'm going to be like the tree planted by the proverbial river. I shall not be moved. I am healing myself and becoming free from distraction. And then what do you do next? You become a lover of mystery. In other words, you fall in love with the mystery of how that feeling, that intangible substance, is going to manifest itself in your life. You don't know how it's going to happen. You don't know who it's going to happen through. You don't know what it's going to look like. You've got rid of the pictures. You've got rid of the limitations. Now you're in the feeling, so you become a lover of the mystery. You walk out of your house saying to yourself, there's good flowing here. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know how it's coming. That's not my job. My job is to stay heavenly minded, to stay spiritually minded, and to eliminate the distractions. And if you do that, you will discover that before you have even asked, the Spirit has already answered, waiting for you to eliminate those distractions, that it may flow in your life and the miracle may take place, the miraculous may happen, the demonstration may happen, the good may flow into your life. You're no longer preventing it. You're not distracting, it's, it, it, it. You're not distracting yourself from it, you see? And then with the awareness that you're not struggling with the mirror anymore, you are standing in the awareness that what you are looking for, you are looking with. You see? You all know you walk and you look for something. You, you, if it's not there, you create it. I was sharing in the earlier service. I remember teaching a class a number of years ago. It was my time to go into teaching. This young lady alerted me to the fact that there was a guy in the class that was very negative. That whenever she or other people spoke or raised their hand to say something, he was always being very sarcastic and Putting, putting what they said down and wasn't providing a really great atmosphere for honest and open sharing in the class. So she described the guy to me and I, you know, was alert to it and I went in to teach and I saw the, the, the guy she had described and sure enough, he looked like he was a sarcastic, cynical kind of guy. And I began to look at this and I began to notice that he was doing certain things that was kind of out of bounds. And I discovered after the class, it was the wrong guy. I had projected that on him. I was influenced by her, thought he was the guy, and I saw what I was looking for. It wasn't even there. I know the guy, now I'm not going to mention his name. He's a great practitioner. He's a great being. He's a great peaceful guy. That wasn't even his nature. But I saw it there. I was influenced, and I let my mind go there. You will find what you're looking for, you see. You want to step into the awareness of a, being a lover of mystery. Oh, how is God showing up today? How is the miracle going to show up today? <laughs> and the mind, surface mind, the distraction will say, this can't be done. It's never happened before. You've never experienced that before. Nobody in your family has ever experienced that before. This has never happened in this organization. What are you talking about? It's impossible. It's not going to, you know, all the distractions will come. And then you will plan your life based on your distractions rather than opening yourself up and demonstrating based on universal truth. Don't fight the mirror. Don't struggle with the mirror. Don't struggle. 
clean up from within. Clean up from within. So that you are walking in the world, but you are of the higher frequency. Your address has changed. Your nervous system is changing even now. Your subconscious mind is beginning to develop new habits of excellence. Looking, looking, looking for the good that what? You are projecting and seeing. How, do we, how can I say that? Because it's already within you. Make me one with everything. You're already one with everything. Let me see it. And you start to develop a new habit. And then as you walk in the world, yes, things go on in the world. But you know what you'll discover? You'll discover that after a while, you adjust faster. You respond differently. You can't stop individuals from making their transition. You, there's certain things that happen in the world. That's just the way it is. But your response will be from a different place, and you will be living in a different world. A world of, well, continued joy. Opportunities flowing. Abundance, you see. And when I say these words, we've tapped into the feeling of it. We're not tapping into the gross materialism of it, you see. Now, obviously, I've said a little bit earlier that this is very simple, but it is difficult because you're bombarded with negativity on a regular basis. It's, you know, if it bleeds, it leads, it bleeds, it leads. It's just, you know, it's just the way our culture is. And so you're always on guard. You're tight, you see. What if this was heaven? What if the kingdom of heaven really is at hand? What if this is it? And all we have to do is remove the obscurations from the mind. What if this is heaven? And you have to remove the distractions. You have to move the impediments. And you clean it up so well from the inside. Rather than fighting the mirror, you clean it. Woo! Where did that rose bush come from? It's, it's been there for 10 years. Where did, what, these trees. Oh, my God. They're so beautiful. What, what, how long have they been here? Oh, well, before you were born. Mm -hmm. I was saying earlier that I can remember when I, a number of years ago when I became a vegetarian. And... I remember my mother was like, oh, no, this boy doesn't even like vegetables. He's going to die. <laughs> so I was, you know, scrambling around trying to get my health thing together. And I, I, I was going down the street that I went down many times in my life. And I saw this health food store. I'd never seen it before. So I went in. And I said, "Wow, oh, this is beautiful. They had all these beautiful supplements and wonderful vegan this and vegetarian that. And I said, wow, how long have you all been here? He said, 20 years. I'd never seen it. Drove down that block my whole life. Know what I saw back then? Fat burger. <laughs> I only saw what I was interested in. You see, back. It. And so, what are you interested in? You're interested in something that goes bump in the night? You're interested in being afraid? You're interested in looking for negativity? You're interested in protecting yourself? The shield and buckler is the presence of God. Your consciousness is your shield and buckler. That's what it is. I don't care how much physical protection you have. If there's a chink in the armor of your consciousness, you're going down. But if you're protecting your consciousness, uh-huh, you're protecting your awareness, What does it state in the 91st Psalm? You make the most high your habitation. You live in God consciousness. You will see all kinds of stuff going on, but no hurt, harm, nor danger can come nigh your dwelling place. You respond differently, even if negative things happen, because you're living in God. You see, that's where you want to be. You want change? Change your vibrational address. Stop fighting the mirror. Clean it up from the inside. And then become a lover of mystery. You, 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 a lot of you like mysteries. You want to try to figure it out. Just become a lover of mystery. You've, you've set something in motion by the feeling tone. 
You've held the feeling tone for a period of time. You're, you're, you're working to not have distractions. So now you become a lover of mystery. How is this feeling going to show up in my life? Who's it going to come through? Where's it going to come? I don't, but, but every day, I'm, instead of looking for the negativity, I'm looking for, I'm looking for the evidence. You know, whoa, oh, there's something good happening. I feel it. What's it? Oh, you know. There's your description of faith. The evidence of things hoped for. Or, no, the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You, you, get, you get that? The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Everything substantial and real is intangible. Everything that is tangible is not real. It's temporary and transitory. The idea behind everything is real. The idea behind it is real. The intangible is real. We've got to live in the invisible. We've got to live in the inaudible to do the impossible. What the world would call impossible. It's going to take a little work. You're going to have to really sometimes burn the midnight oil. You're going to have to actually, you're going to have to actually pray, for real. Not just hear me talk about it. You're going to actually have to do it. When you're not on a Sunday, you're going to have to actually do it on Monday. Tuesday too. Throw in Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Somebody's saying every day? Do you brush your teeth every day? Do you? you take a shower every day? Yes, every day. Take that inner shower. Clean the mirror from the inside out. And then watch. Become a lover of the mystery. Ooh, something's unfolding. Ooh, I've got a peace. I don't even know why I have this peace of mind. So much calamity is happening in the world. I, why do I have this peace of mind? Why does things keep turning out good for me? Why do I feel safe in a world that is so volatile? Why? Because I'm making the most high my habitation. Then I walk in the world. But I'm of somewhere else. I'm of the infinite and invisible. And when I say I, I'm talking about the I that is we. I'm talking about all of us, you see. So just imagine for a moment. You don't have to imagine. Just feel for a moment the thousands of people that are tuning into this service and who will tune into this service. Uh, at different time because of the time zone aspect of life and people are waking up and going to sleep at different times on the planet. Just think about all of us right now coming into a great degree of coherence around the fundamental idea that we have the capacity to change our address, to change our vibrational address, and that we have the capacity to program our own DNA, not allow the world to do it. But to program it, not allow heredity to do it. Heredity is the condensation of previously held thought, for it. thought forms that have been passed down generationally. They don't determine your destiny only if you let them, you see. So, so imagine now or feel into the fact that all these beings are all around the planet holding this high frequency. And with the scientific awareness and the spiritual awareness uh, that a thought that emerges from a sense of unity is way more powerful than a thought form emerging from a sense of separation. They don't have the same power. So we're surrounding each other with such love and integrity and beauty, abundance and joy. We're being lifted higher. And we're embracing all beings. No separation. We understand the quantum statement as ascribed to Jesus the Christ. As I am lifted up, I draw all unto me. As we're being lifted up as a community in this rarefied atmosphere of absolute truth, we are drawing. Here's the small print. When you're about to go to another level of consciousness, the ego will attack you. It is. Now, under, uh, let me just give this. Ego has a bad rap. Ego is here for your survival. Been here with this forever in order to keep us you know, alive, yes. But its sense of separation has now run its course. There's something called a healthy ego that gives you confidence. It gives you the ability to move forward in your life, okay? But when you're about to go to another level of consciousness, the egoic perception 
will take over sometimes and, and thwart your movement. I had an ego attack a couple of days ago. I didn't sleep for the whole 24, I just didn't go to sleep because the ego kept sh showing these pictures of something bad happening to somebody that had done something to me. And I was just like, get thee behind me. I'm not going on the dark side. I'm not doing it. All night, all night. Just like, well, this could happen, this could happen, this could happen to him, this could happen. This, ugh. No, 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 no. I forgive, I release, I forgive, I release. Get to behind me. I forgive, I release, I forgive, I release. I was, I was talking to my friend Rick Smith about it, and he was saying, man, you did in one day what it took me two weeks to do. He said, somebody owed me some money, and for two weeks, all I saw with myself was, I'm not even going to mention it, I saw, you know, doing some terrible things to the guy. He, he said, then two weeks later, you know, I, I broke free from that mesmerism, and he paid me my money. But uh, that was a long night because it was trying to prevent me from going to this space of spaciousness and love and beauty at a higher level than I've ever been before. All night long, I wrestled with that limited perception. I'm not saying it's easy. It's work. It's work. But it's so worthwhile to walk with peace of mind, to walk with the dynamic sense of well-being, to walk with an awareness that all of your needs are met, even if you don't even see how it's going to be done. It's so wonderful to walk in that awareness of love and loving to love. Yes. Mm. Mm. It's so wonderful. To walk and to be a celebrant and to localize the cosmic celebration that's happening cosmically. Oh, there's so much here. Jesus the Christ brought us the Christ consciousness. Gautama the Buddha, this whole Buddha field. You're becoming more cosmic. We understand the cosmos exists. And so when you're, you're waking up to your cosmic nature, and then you'll laugh at yourself that this grand cosmic being, this great cosmic being that has everything, is so full of fear. You'll laugh at yourself. You see, it's okay. Shakespeare gave us permission in this human comedy to laugh at ourselves. But I want you to embrace yourself now. Embrace, embrace, embrace. And then come with me into a moment of celebration. Come with me into a moment of celebration. Come with me into a moment of celebration as we celebrate the isness and the nowness, the foreverness of the spirit of the living God. Nataraj, God is dancer. Watch this individual dance for God. That's Lauren. Lauren Gritsky. Lauren Gritsky. Move it. Groove with it. Uh oh, she got some moves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! That's Lauren. Mitch, she's getting it, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> she just hit a three-pointer. <laughs> it's on you now, boo, okay? You can't just watch somebody dance. You're not a bystander.
you to dance for God, you see. Pray, love, give, share, shine, glow, radiate, create from the spirit of the living God. When this song hits, have somebody film you. Send it in. Just put it on the media. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Sounds like golden. Uh Uh-oh. 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 to the good news that your life will be determined by the what you're placing in your awareness change your vibrational address
shift your point of view. And we enter into this space right now as lovers of God and lovers of humanity, lovers of life, lovers of truth. We enter into this space with a great degree of thanksgiving. Oh, a great degree of appreciation. Gratitude is taking over our life. We just, we just can't be grateful enough for our existence. For underneath seeming calamity woo, is an order, a harmony. And you and we have arrived. To allow our dharma, to allow our way on the planet to be a vibrational placeholder for the next stage of human evolution and nothing short of that. Every business endeavor, everything that we're about is about being a delivery system for the next stage of unfolding. Structures are falling down all around us. You can't depend upon them. The rock of Gibraltar is cracked. But God is God. Oh, uh, what did Dr. Holmes say? I was just speaking about it, I think, at the practitioner meeting that happened yesterday. Wow. So much goes on. Now, I was reminding our sacred order of practitioners of Dr. Holmes' statement right there on page 33, the science of mind and spirit book, that never was there a cosmic famine. God is always God. We may stumble, but always there is that eternal voice forever whispering within our ear, that thing which forever sings and sings. We may stumble. Distractions may catch us. We may fall into being distracted, fear bound. But it's no cosmic famine. God is always God. And that eternal voice is whispering within our ear. Oh, it's shouting. You, woo, be you. You, wake up. You shine. Come on. Woo. You glorify the presence. You sing for God. You dance for God. You love for God. You give for God. You share for God. You create for God. You be for God. Simply, we're here for God. You. Come with me. Come with me right now. Come with me right now. Just, just let everything go and come into the upper room. Come into the secret place of the Most High. Making the Most High our habitation, our address, where we live. Woo, woo, woo. Come, come with me. Take my vibrational hand all around the world. Can you feel it? Come, come, feel the tingling. Come, 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 come. Infinite Spirit, Lord God Almighty, Gate God of the universe, the living one, infinite presence, Mother, Father God, presence that's never an absence, how great thou art. How great thou art. And, 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 and we're aware that we can only live, we can only live by our own personal revelation of this truth. We can't fly on the wings of somebody else. We have to have a personal revelation of this. Oh, let me see that which is real. Let me see it. It's from this awareness of deep unity with the presence of God that I speak the word for each and every one of us. There's only one of us here. So I speak the word that we may be free today, liberated from limited superstitious thought, free from the worry, the doubt, the fear, the blame, the shame, the boredom, and all the distractions. 
that we may walk with our heart open in tune with the infinite in tune with the infinite all needs met feel it divine health wholeness and harmony feel it be here now mm. yeah, be here now feel it yeah, be here now oh be here now be here now yeah. oh. Outer eye closed, just tap the space between the eyebrows and give yourself permission to see without eyes and to hear without ears. To see with your consciousness, that's what you are. You are pure consciousness. 